Welcome back guys. Today we have a Yukon detailing, full exterior and interior. It's for one of our maintenance clients. This is not a maintenance vehicle, but it's done annually. So we're getting it done for them. So as always, we're gonna throw in some tips and tricks for you also. So, Joel, what are we doing to this Yukon, man? Yukon, so, right? So, yeah. So, this Yukon is, it's, you know, it's over 10 years old. We're going to give it a full exterior. It's going to need a clay bar. It's going to need, you know, one-step polish. We're going to do the tires. We're going to do the black trim restoration. We're going to do the headlights. Um, we're going to do the full interior, steam clean, uh, you know, all glass, deep vacuum. We're, this one's going to get the work. All right. Hey, Joel, I mean, it's foggy right now, man. How does that affect Yeah, the, the fog, you have quite a bit of precipitation in the air. So what we generally do is we don't do any of our finishing touches till the very end. Mm -hmm. So if we're doing the exterior first, which we'll do, we'll do the exterior. It's actually a great time to, um, to do claying because we use um, the, the, the soap method. So we'll spray the whole car down, wash it, rinse it and then we'll foam it up again and then that's what we're going to use as a clay lubricant is going to be the soap so it gives us time we don't have any direct sunlight so we have plenty of time for the soap to dwell on the surface as we're actually claying the vehicle all surfaces and then um, yeah and then we'll get into the rinse and then the polish and then we'll put some bead maker on it to seal it and then we'll uh yeah and then we'll start on the interior all right man do your thing joe all right Hey, Joel, I heard on the streets you're trying a new product today. Yeah, we're trying something else new. We, uh, we, we placed the order and, and I'm, you know, I've been toying here and there with tire cleaners. You know, right now I'm using a degreaser. Um, there's a few dedicated ones out there on the market. You know, PNS has one, Gion has one, um, a few other, you know, large uh, manufacturers have them. The one I'm going to try right now is going to be a simply tire cleaner from Gion. And, uh, this guy is just going to be for tire prep. So before we, uh, before we actually, it's not going to work on rims. Brake Buster for PNS that we normally use, that's something that you can use. It's, a, it's an entire wheel cleaner, so tires and wheels. This guy here is just going to be dedicated for the rubber. Sometimes we have clients that have, you know, a lot of baked on uh, brake dust that's on the wheels. And we want to be able to get this stuff off easily without, you know, without spending a ton of time on it. So this is going to be, um, basically like a, a we're gonna do a pre-rinse let this guy dwell on for a second scrub it out rinse it off and then we're gonna pre and then we're going to uh, let it dwell one more time let me ask you yes how can you try new products I'm just trying to see what's out there I like to you know I like to to see if there's anything that's gonna be a little bit more effective something that's gonna be easier you know if there's ease of use even things you know you know I would even say, you know, the, the toxicity levels of certain chemicals, I lean towards things that are a little bit less, uh, you know, harsh. You know, you're, you're breathing these chemicals in, you're working with them on a daily basis. So you wanna make sure that you're staying healthy. And if it's something that you're constantly using and breathing in or exposing to your skin. So this is gonna be the first application. And as you can see, you'll start to see the brake dust and all the grime starting to dissipate off the tire which is a good sign showing you that it's, you know, that the, that the agents are working. Mm, that's why it turns kind of like brownish, right? Yes. Because of dirt. And this, this product is a little bit more on the expensive side. You know, it's not, it's, you know, I don't, I'm testing it to see if it's something that I would be, you know, willing to buy, you know, for the pricing itself if it's going to save me a ton of time and it's something that's going to be uh really useful to us then you know it may be something that I'd, i'll go forward with using um because well, it's not something i would need on every vehicle so pretty much right now you're just testing it yeah i'm just testing Got it. it and there's a few things i i look for when i am testing a product like i said the toxicity levels um ease of use uh is it if it's something that i can use for multiple applications that's always a bonus the more um, the more the more uses you can get out of one item the more value it brings as a mobile detailer also because you you don't you're limited with space so it's not like we have these garages full of space where we have cabinets full of different types of tire cleaners so if you could have something that that can do two in one or even three in one that's even better
What is this, room cleaner or what? This is going to be a dilution of a, a diluted acid. Diluted acid. Yeah. So for the audience, you're gonna just do half? Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just I'm just gonna do half so you uh, so everybody can see the effectiveness of it and to see how fast it reacts on the brake dust and pulling off all the grime. I can feel the uh, there's a little bit of pool just because the grime, the acid is attaching to the grime and in, in, in dislodging it from the surface itself. So it kind of has a little bit of a of a of a friction that it's uh, causing. But you'll see the difference in the breakdown of the dust, of the brake dust and grime. Oh, you can tell the difference right away. How come this water is sticking and not that one, the one you just did? So this is going to have contaminants and particles on the surface of the, of the rim itself. So what's, what's happening is it's allowing brake dust and all the contaminants to stick to all of to to basically stick to all the contaminants that are in there. Once we hit it with the acid, the acid starts to break down all of the, all the brake dust that gets caked on. And then on top of that brake dust, you get dirt, grime, industrial fallout, and that's all the stuff that's sticking to this side here. Oh. So you have to take all of that off, work it off in order to get this look and this shine and this kind of um, brilliance out of the rim again. Look at that difference, yeah. man. That's good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. All right, guys, so since we're gonna be covering acid a little bit in this video. I want to show some areas here on the chrome trim where we have water spotting. These grill obviously gets hit with a lot. There's some etching from bugs. It gets hit a lot. You know, you, you, it's a front flat panel. So, you know, things are just going to hit it. You know, you have things in the, on the road that come up and, and smack it. Uh, bugs, you have some water spots from where water's channeling and dripping down. Uh, you know, you have your nice emblem here, but as you can see, there's all through here, you have hard water stains. So we're gonna hit this one with the acid too. I'm gonna show you guys really quick how fast and easy you can get all this stuff uh, cleaned up for your clients. Is there a specific type of acid? Yeah, well, there's different. You, there's different types of acid. There's some some companies uh, promote strictly wheel acid. Some some of them will promote you know water spot removal acid. There's a few different types out there. So really do your research, see what works well for you and what your needs are. And uh, you know, make sure you're asking professional, you know, if you're buying it from a supplier, ask as many questions as possible because you want to make sure that you're using the right chemical for the right application. And I also know all acid can't go on certain things, right? Yes, you don't want to keep acid dwelling on, on paint surfaces. Dilution ratio is, is huge. And then also make sure that you're, uh, you're reading everything because you know, it's, it's pretty, it can be pretty hazardous to your health and to, uh, to certain materials. So if you can see now up top, we have no more water, you know, the water etching from the, from the hard water nice and clean down here. All the water spots are removed and you're, and you're left with a nice brilliant shine. So you could do this with all surfaces of the, uh, of the metal and chrome, but you also have to make sure you're not getting it on aluminum. Like I said, you're going to have to do some research. This is not for the beginners. Mm, so this is more advanced technique right here. Yes. Cause acid will, acid can cause you a lot of damage and you'll be, you know, you, you will be uh, paying for your mistakes greatly if you're trying to use this stuff without understanding what it can be used on and for. So here we're gonna show how to use it to get the best out of all your decals and the trim. These guys, if you notice in here, you're gonna see some buildup in between the letters. These are very difficult to get out this grime if you're trying to do it by hand. But if you have a nice soft brush, um, I have about five different brushes. People, you know, people have been asking, oh, what brushes are you using for this, that? I have about six dedicated brushes that I use for different things in different sizes. So this brush here specifically I use just for acid. And you can actually see that the, it's starting to kind of break up over time just because, you know, just using it from acid over and over, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna give, you know, it has a little bit of wear and tear on it. 
um, from the chemical itself. But here we're gonna get through, work through all these little areas and get all the gunk off using the brush and acid. Oh, so you spray on the brush? Yes. I thought you were gonna spray on the... Oh, no, I'm just all spraying right. on the brush and I'm working it in. You know, this is, this is a boar's hair brush, so these are professional detailing brushes that are gonna be nice and soft and I pre-soak them before we do this so it softens them up so we're not um, we're not scratching the surface you know hey you are causing a little friction but we're not doing anything crazy where'd you where'd you get your acid from who'd you acid guy let me know <laughs> the acid will be down in the link we'll get that out for you guys so uh so yeah you guys can uh start playing with acid hey but just letting you know you actually buy the acid but you dilute it so it's safe for paint. Yes, yes. So, there you go, man. How you learn all this? Just talking to guys, talking to the talking yeah. to the suppliers. I have a really good supplier out there. Shout out to PNS East Bay, uh, Steven. Joel, you're gonna start the uh, claying process? Yeah, we already did the wash. Uh, we finished up the wheels. So now we have uh, we have a man Sal over here putting in uh, putting in the soap, getting the soap all applied to the vehicle. We're gonna use this as a lubricant. Um, there's a few different ways you can clay. You can you can do the entire car, dry it out, and then go panel by panel with the detail spray. I like to do this way, so we just have at it. You know, it, it kind of knocks out two birds with one stone. You know, we're, we're doing the decontamination. It's lubricated all over. And then um, then we're able to just do it the final rinse. And then I can jump right into uh, blowing it down. And then we just do the polish after that. So it's basically condensing, you know, condensing the work into one. But you have to make sure that you have the right, you know, the right temperature outside. So the soap's not drying up on the surface. So now when it's really hot. Yeah, when it's hot, this isn't the best method. I would, I would, probably you know do the do the method that i spoke of beforehand panel by panel, panel by panel yes. all right but today since today no sun. it's perfect we're, we're, we're ready to go what are you doing so we're splitting up the clay i split the clay in half this is a coarse clay so what i'm doing is i'm flattening it out and this is the portion that's going to go on the surface a lot of people use clay mitts i like to stick to the normal clay it allows me to get into areas that you can't get into with the mitts um, it allows me to get into small small little crevices like these door handles through here. I can maneuver around the trim real nice and tight. And I can always shape it to get into a little area that you might not be able to get into with the actual clay mitt itself. So there's a couple, uh, there's pros and cons to the clay itself. If you drop it, you gotta get rid of it cause it's gonna pull up any contaminant that was on the ground. Um, you know, it's a little bit expensive in, for one time use, but you know, if you wanna get it, get it done right the first time, and you're looking to do any kind of correction or polishing, this stuff, I feel like, uh, especially in little areas here and there to get into, it's your best bet. You can see how it's bonding to the surface, yep. but look at it now. So it creates a hydrophobic. This is clayed, so you have there's nothing for it to hold on to. But to be able to get these hydrophobics helps a ton, especially if you're working in hot weather. To be able to get, you know, for something that has nothing on it, we hit it with, you know, it's fully decontaminated, and for it to to bead water like that, it's pretty impressive. So this is for all the detailers out there. If you are working on a vehicle where you know you can see residue of maybe smoke or of grease, oil. 
I always do my, uh, the order of operations for me is I always do the windows at the very end, just so I don't get any overspray if I'm doing any kind of, um, you know, protectant on the surface or if I'm doing any kind of leather treatment, I don't want to get any overspray onto the clean windows. So with that said, in one of the previous videos, I showed you how I use the interior cleaner and I kind of hit the windows with the, uh, to get the oil and the grease off from the little kid's fingerprints. So this vehicle here, um, we do have a little bit of hazing and residue. So I have the steamer out. As I'm steaming, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually hit the windows. What this is gonna do is it's gonna help break up a lot of the oils that are on the surface of the, of the window itself. So when we go through and actually hit it with the window cleaner, you're, you're not having to, to move around most of that oil. We're gonna get a good amount of it off here, if not all of it. The heat's gonna just help break everything up, all the oils just go through. And we're not looking to perfect it right now since we're still gonna go back with the window cleaner. But what we're doing is just removing a good amount of it, of those oils on the surface to make it easier to clean. guys we're all done with the GMC Yukon back here hope some of the advice with the acid helped you out make sure that you're advising the labeling any instructions dilution ratios and also make sure that you're speaking with your distributor on how to use and when to use the acid so if you guys have any more questions or need any more advice there's a link down below we can schedule the one-on-one -on -one calls at your convenience and uh, all the products that we're using are going to be in the description below like share subscribe and i'll see you on the next one